By their very nature, the places we go fishing are magnets for birds, insects, amphibians, mammals, and of course, the fish themselves. A huge variety of wildlife depends on this beautiful water environment and the diversity of habitats it provides. Enjoying our sport in these amazing places is absolutely key to the joy of fishing. Although I'm so passionate about fishing and the fish, but we still care about everything else around it. And you need everything around it. You can't just have fishing and nothing else. The Colne Valley is a stunning wetland ecosystem. 200 kilometres of river and canals, plus over 60 lakes full of biodiversity and great fishing. You can't take anglers out of the Colne Valley. It just doesn't make sense without them. Like many of our waterways, the Colne Valley has been suffering the consequences of human impact, pollution, biodiversity loss and invasive species. That's not good for fishing and it's not good for other species either. As a result of habitat loss and invasive species, the area has seen a reduction of refuge available for fish from predators and populations of species such as the waterfowl have diminished. When it comes to habitat, what's good for fish is also good for other wildlife such as water voles. So although the underlying reason to protect these wetland ecosystems was different, the desire to manage, maintain and promote this biodiversity was actually common ground here in the Colne Valley for the Wildlife Trust and the angling groups. The angling groups here in the Colne Valley have been working with you guys at the Wildlife Trust for a little while now. That might seem like an unlikely partnership or is that an entirely misinformed opinion? No, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I mean, anglers and uh, conservationists uh, haven't always rubbed along um, in the best way. But I think what we've tried to focus on in this project in the Colne Valley Regional Park is what the yeah. conservationists and the anglers have in common. Because many anglers tell me that they enjoy watching wildlife and just being in nature and quiet green spaces like we are today, um, as much as the actual as much as the actual fishing experience. Yeah. And bang, there you go. We've got something in common. We've started on that basis and then looked at what we can achieve together to make those green spaces even better. So in reality, it's the perfect partnership, really. Yes, yeah, you can say that. Kingfisher, kingfisher, two kingfishers, amazing. <laughs> My name is Lydia Ennis, I'm the Colne Valley Rivers and Wetlands Officer for Hearts and Middlesex Wildlife Trust and we are here in Sabies Pool in Rickmansworth which is run by West Hampstead Angling Society and we are here to talk about our angling and nature conservation project. We started working with angling clubs in the Colne Valley uh, about two years ago as a joint venture to help restore wetland wildlife uh, across the Colne Valley. Every piece of water in the Colne Valley, every lake, every stretch of river is managed and looked after and fished by an angling club. So from our perspective as a wildlife trust, if we want to go out into the wider landscape and help restore nature, we have to work with angling clubs. Angling clubs are, are, are a key ally for us. My name is Tony Booker. I'm a chairman of the Colne Valley Fisheries Consultative and um, have been involved in running the project, but this particular club I've been involved with for uh, most of my adult life. I was brought up into fishing as a, as a child um, and it's not just about the fishing, it's about being out in the environment, wildlife um, and, and everything that goes with it. The Colne Valley Fisheries Consultative were actively engaging with the uh, Hearts of Middlesex Wildlife Trust and it was actually because of that relationship that there was a perfect opportunity afforded to us to, uh, to set up and run this, this project. The central tenant of the whole project has been the Angling and Nature Conservation course. It was set up in recognition of the fact that a lot of fishery managers um, in angling clubs, they are volunteers in the same way that we have volunteers at the Wildlife Trust. And they are basically being asked to look after livestock. It might be underwater, but it's still livestock. Very often in their spare time, after work, at weekends, and they're being asked to do all of this without, you know, basically very little training or what they've picked up over the years. So we had the traditional fisheries management modules uh, dealing with stock and fish biology, fish disease. But then we also had a whole day on wetland ecology, which is essentially how to manage wetland habitats to, to get the most out of them for nature. And the key throughout all of this project has just been uh, this uh, recognition that if you have healthy habitats, healthy invertebrate communities, healthy plants, you will have a healthy fish stock and therefore happy anglers, hopefully. The objectives for us as an angling community um, was to be able to start looking at the bigger picture um, and to deliver what we were doing on a localised basis on a landscape scale uh, and, and create continuity down through the valley. So it became important that we were not only engaging with the Wildlife Trust but the angling clubs themselves started to better uh, engage with each other. 
we're guardians of the, the lakes that we have. You know, it's up to us to look after those little pockets of the environment, so to, just to make sure it's good for fishing, uh, for the anglers to take on after us, and also for the nature and the wildlife that we share the environment with. We recognised that we had a deficit in, in skills, so the opportunity to go on the course uh, enabled us to, to learn a lot and also a qualification at the end, a recognised qualification for those that have taken the course, very useful. We've used our skills with the, the tree work we've done, we've, we've opened up sunlight to the river uh, which has allowed the environment to flourish, bring life into the, into the river. We've also built some groins to, to sort of remove some of the sediment. Um, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, with the help from the Hertfordshire Middlesex Wildlife Trust, we're going to be planting some coir matting that's been pre-planted with irises and sedge, which is going to be great for, our, for this year's young fry and also for the water voles and the water vole project. It's been said by some of our senior members that water voles haven't been seen on our fishery for 30 years, which is really quite a sad indictment of the way that you know people look after the environment. With the work that we've done this year, we've had our first sighting of water voles, which is just really exciting. I haven't seen one yet, I'm hoping to see one soon, but definitely the benefits are there for, for both the environment and for the fishing. What are we looking at here? This looks like the perfect habitat for something. What is it? The club here used to have water voles, um, mm -hmm. but only the older members can actually remember seeing them at the lake. They, they, they disappeared in recent years. Yeah. And we wrote a management plan with this club as part of the project. And one of the objectives in the management plan was uh, to see water voles back here again so that anglers could enjoy watching them from, from the other bank when they were fishing. Yeah. So what we're looking at here is work parties' efforts, working on recreating um, the spits here. So rebuilding them up and then putting uh, sedges and rushes and uh, reeds back to restore uh, a lush marginal fringe. All of this habitat being perfect for water voles, I imagine with all the amount of work it's put in, it's got to be multi-purpose <laughs> it yes, was a lot no, of effort. Yeah, we, we were just going to sell it, um, sell it to them on the basis of the water voles. Uh, it comes back to this, if you manage your fishery for nature, then you are managing it as well for your fish in the best way. Water quality is often a concern for fisheries and um, all these marginal plants, uh, the sedges, the irises, they will be helping to keep the balance of water quality because they help to take nutrients out of the water and often too much nutrient input is, is a problem on fisheries uh, and secondly these are great features uh, for fish to congregate around and that's something that the club have seen since creating these spits and say that they're not finished they're clearly not finished but um, they've actually seen the, the, the fish flocking to them and congregating around them so hopefully in the future there'll be lovely features to fish to as well as places to watch water voles. Water voles are a priority species for us here at Hearts and Middlesex and throughout the Colne Valley they are one of the UK's most threatened mammals and anglers are one of the water voles key allies when they're trying to recover their populations. One of the main threats to water voles at the moment is habitat loss and so the work that angling clubs do uh, on rivers and lakes, that small scale uh, ha habitat management for want of a better word, that all creates the lush marginal vegetation that water voles so rely on to survive. Of the three water vole populations we have in the Colne Valley, one of those is on a nature reserve but the other two are on active managed fisheries. The reason I wanted to be involved with the project was to extend my knowledge really. Um, if we can reassure ourselves that what we are doing is benefiting not just the fishing side of it, but the wildlife and everything, all the surrounding, I think that's a brilliant thing. Fishing clubs are incredibly lucky that we have these habitats to look after. They're incredibly um, delicate. By removing trees, uh, we get better wind down the lake, better oxygen, less leaves going in the lake, less deoxygenation, less silt. So they like us cutting down trees because it helps the water voles. We like cutting down the trees because it helps the fishing. But at the end of the day, it improves both the nature and the fishing. The success of the project has been about that collaboration between angling clubs and the wildlife trusts. Everybody's got it. That's really what it comes down to now, is people realise that there's a bigger picture and they want to buy into that. The project's only been running for a couple of years, but you can, you can already see change happening on these fisheries um, as a result of the training that these guys have received. For me, personally, I think that that relationship that is now built between the Wildlife Trust and the Angling Clubs generally is priceless. Um, so consequently we've got some much better managed fisheries and we've now got even better managed wildlife areas and, and wildlife refuges. It has genuinely been a uh a joy and a privilege to work with the angling community. Uh, they are so proactive. You say, oh, wouldn't it be nice to get this done? 
uh, one day and then you know you expect it to happen in a couple of weeks but no they ring you the next day and it's done and I think it's that 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 proactive that can-do attitude has been a breath of fresh air.